Easter is here, a wonderful time of reflection and celebration for a specific group of people. All who bear the name of Christ come out of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ with the single word that marks their peace with God, redemption. Today, I hope to share some key texts in scripture that will help you understand the significance of redemption, why we need it, and how it shapes our lives as Christians. So let's jump right in. To set the stage, let's start by reading Ephesians 1.7, which beautifully encapsulates the essence of redemption. It says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. The word redemption used here means to release or to set free, with the implied analogy to the process of freeing a slave. But in order to understand this idea of being free, we must understand that we were first enslaved. As we explore redemption, it's crucial to acknowledge the reality of sin. Romans 3, 23 to 24 reminds us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. You see, prior to being redeemed, we were enslaved to our sin and in what scripture calls the domain of darkness. Sin separates us from God's perfect standard and redemption is the divine solution to bridge that gap. Once we understand our sin and separation from God, we can start to see our need for redemption. Colossians 1, 13 to 14 paints a vivid picture of our need for redemption. It says, for he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We were once bound in darkness in need of rescue. Redemption becomes the means by which God liberates us from the consequences of our fallen state. This inevitably leads us to the atoning work of Christ, which is the very heart of redemption. Hebrews 9.12 provides insight into the power of Christ's sacrifice. It reads, And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Christ's sacrifice on the cross is the pinnacle of redemption, securing forgiveness and opening the way to eternal life. Unlike the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, which was inadequate, Christ's sacrifice was perfect, offering eternal life. Jesus' work on the cross is so perfect, in fact, that it permanently transforms and continually sanctifies those whom it saves. 2 Corinthians 5.17 speaks to the sanctifying nature of redemption. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Redemption isn't just a one-time event. It's an ongoing process of becoming a new creation in Christ. The Holy Spirit works within us, shaping us into the likeness of Christ, which finally leads us to the response of redemption. Our response to redemption is one of faith. Galatians 3, 13 to 14 sheds light on this. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us in order that Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Our response involves recognizing our need, trusting in Christ's work, and receiving the promise of the Spirit. The journey of redemption encompasses our past, present, and future. It begins with the acknowledgement of sin, leads to the transformative work of Christ, and invites us to respond with faith and gratitude. As we reflect on these truths, I invite you to consider how understanding redemption impacts your daily life. How might it shape your relationships, decisions, and responses to challenges in this life? How might this affect your worship this Easter Sunday? Comment and share your thoughts below. Have a wonderful Easter and may the message of redemption resonate in our hearts as we celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection.